سلام الله عليكم وعليكم السلام ما شاء الله Allah, I love your energy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always fill you with energy, inshallah. And may Allah fill you with energy. Oh, ameen, ameen. Barakallah feek, Ayyub. Thank you so much, Habibi. Well, we're going to continue in our stories from the Quran. And today I have a very, very special story. But, you know, I tell you guys that every single time. And you know why? Because every story is so special. And every story Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the Qur'an so we learn from and we learn how to act and we learn what to say and what to do and you're also going to, you guys are going to teach these to your children insha'Allah and they're going to learn these beautiful stories from you. Today, we're going to learn about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Sayyidina Ibrahim was an amazing prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was one of the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned so much in the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a special name. He's Allah's Khalil. Did you know that? That means he's Allah's friend. Oh my God, can you imagine being the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does Allah need a friend? No. Allah does not need a friend, but he wanted to honor Sayyidina Ibrahim, so he gave him this title. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing if we had a title like that? It would be. That would be the amazingest title of them all. It would be. the. Oh, there is a better title than that. And the better title than being Allah's friend is the title that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got. He got the title of being Habibullah. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. But we're going to talk about that later, inshaAllah. Now, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was young, he grew up in a country very close to where you guys are right now. He grew up in Iraq. Iraq is not far from here. But he grew up at a time when everyone in his village and everyone in his town, they were worshipping idols. They didn't believe in one God. They didn't believe in the oneness of Allah. They had in one town like 70 huge idols. And one of them, which was the biggest of all of them, was made out of gold. And its eyes were made out of rubies and gems. Can you imagine that in your head? And people used to go... Yeah, it's like, ugh. And people, that's, that's like probably the worst thing ever. Worst thing ever. And people used to go to that idol and make sujood to that idol worshipping it and making dua to that idol saying, oh, idol, please give me this, please give me that. Sayyidina Ibrahim, as a young man, he saw that and he said, oh, that's disgusting. Ugh, there's only yeah. one God and he's Allah. And Sayyidina Ibrahim, in his heart, he knew that. And in his heart, believed it, just like you believe it, don't you? Mm-hmm. What do we say? La ilaha. <laughs> say that for me again. Say it like you really mean it. <laughs> One more time. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. That's right. We believe that in our hearts, our mind, and spirits. And we don't worship anyone except Allah. Allah. And who do we love? Our Prophet? Muhammad. And so Sayyidina Ibrahim, young like you, he said, that's disgusting. How do they worship an idol? Never. I'll never accept that. And then Allah revealed himself to him. And Allah made Sayyidina Ibrahim a prophet. And he became a prophet of Allah. And he was calling people to Allah, telling them that these idols you're worshipping, oh, no way, this is terrible. There's only one God. But did they listen to him? No. They didn't listen to him. So Sayyidina Ibrahim, because he was so smart, alayhi salam, he had an idea. One day, when everyone wasn't around, they were out doing some silly partying. Sayyidina Ibrahim got an axe. Ooh. And he went into the big hall with all of these idols. And guess what he started doing? Destroying. Show me how he would destroy it. I can't explain it because I don't, I don't yeah. say 
Yeah, but just like this. Exactly, yeah. He destroyed all the idols except for the biggest, the one. biggest one. And he took the axe and he tied it around the biggest one's neck. And the biggest one was made out of gold. And everyone came back and they came into the hall and they said, What happened to our idols? Oh my goodness. They're all destroyed except for one. <gasps> then one person said, I'm sure Ibrahim did this. Go get Ibrahim. And they brought Sayyidina Ibrahim. And they said, Ibrahim, did you do this? You know what he said to them? He said, well, why don't you go ask the big idol? If they can talk, if you worship them, ask him. And then they said, Ibrahim, you know our idols don't speak. You know our idols can't do anything. And then he said to them, well, why do you worship them? Isn't that silly? Worship something that can't speak, can't do anything? They got so mad at Sayyidina Ibrahim, they wanted to punish him. And they want to punish him really badly. So you know what they did? They dug a huge hole in the ground. The biggest hole you can ever imagine in your life. And they put all of this wood and all of this charcoal and they lit a fire. For one month, they lit this humongous fire to make it so, so hot that if a bird came even close to that fire, it would die. Oh, they wanted to hurt Sayyidina Ibrahim. And kill him. Yes. All because he told them to worship Allah. one Allah. And Sayyidina Ibrahim wasn't afraid. He said, I am with Allah. So they wanted to throw him in the fire, but they didn't even know how to get close to the fire because the fire was so big. And one story tells us that shaitan, uh, what do we feel about shaitan? The worst. Uh, he's like the worst. worst. Oh, he's the worst. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. We make du'a go in the bathroom so Allah protects us from shaitan. Shaitan's the worst, 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 worst. Shaitan came in the form of a man and he taught them how to build something called a catapult. A, have you heard of a catapult? A catapult is when you put something in something and whoo, it throws it really far. So they learn how to build a catapult. And they put Sayyidina Ibrahim, they tied his hands, Ayyub, look. They tied his legs, Mustafa and Muhammad. Hassan, they tied his body, Ahmed, they tied his body. And they put him in the catapult. And the Malaika, they saw this and they got sad. They said, Ya Allah, Sayyidina Ibrahim, your prophet, he's the only person on this earth that's worshipping you. Ya Allah. Let us help him. Isn't that nice of the malaika? Yeah. If, it's the nicest thing that a malaika did. Yeah, if you do good, the malaika want to help you. So Sayyidina Jibreel comes to Sayyidina Ibrahim and he says to him, Ya Ibrahim, do you need any help? Can I help you? Look at Sayyidina Ibrahim, how strong his iman was. He said, I don't need any help from you. I have Allah. And they threw him, and he was flying in the air, going into the fire. And he says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil. That I have full trust in Allah, that Allah is enough for me, and Allah will take care of everything. everything. And Allah tells us in the Quran that Allah says to the fire, Oh, fire! Allah makes a command be cool and a place that's peaceful for Sayyidina Ibrahim. So when Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, landed in the big fire, guess what? It didn't burn him at all. He, much. It didn't burn him, didn't hurt him. He felt so peaceful, Hassan. He felt so relaxed. He felt so happy. He felt so comfortable. He stayed there for a while. And he said later on when he got out that the best time in my whole life was when I was in the fire. The fire. 
because Allah protected him from burning it. So when we have trust in Allah, when we believe in Allah, what does Allah do? He protects us. us. That's what we do. We listen to Allah, we make dua, and He protects us like He protected Sayyidina Ibrahim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all love Sayyidina Ibrahim and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and follow them in the most beautiful of ways. Say, Ameen. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum.